Hello everybody, a lot of people have been asking me what would happen if Bugsy Jean was in the Conquest ending with everybody? Okay. Okay, if it happened normally and Bugsy just saw everybody die in front of him while that gear was like, it's for game industries. And let's just say mentally Bugs Bugsy G would not be able to, uh, he wouldn't feel the same way. He's like, listen, Nip Gear, I'm the most powerful person in your universe right now. You didn't need to do this. But it's for game industries. Yeah, I understand that, but do you understand how powerful I am? With, without, without any freaking restrictions, without any restrictions on my powers, I'm freaking powerful. We could have done something without you doing this, and now, now they're gone. And I never got to say to any of them how I really felt. Would he hate Nep Gear? I, I guess he would at first. Because trust me, he would have been like, you know what? <coughs> he would have probably been like, you know what? And he would have just killed R4, like, easy. And he would have just looked at Nep Gear. Like, the most, like, he'd shoot Nep Gear the most scary and possibly most murderous look he can ever give somebody. And be like, Nip gear, you better stay far, far, far away from me. Because honestly, what you did without even consulting me, without any of you consulting me, like, let's say, okay, let's say Bugsy didn't have his, let's say Bugsy G didn't have his thing where he can only revive, where he can find, where he can revive people. And he didn't have that. Let's say if he didn't have that. Because he does. But he can only do it like... It's kind of like the Dragon Balls. He can only... But he can only do it once. But let's say he doesn't have that. He would... He would harbor... So much hate... For Nep... For Nep Gear. So much hate. So much actual... Factual hate for Nep Gear. I, would he be <laughs> now would he become a villain I don't really know hold up I gotta blow my nose sorry guys sorry you gotta hear this oh sh Jesus <laughs> oh. sorry about that guys uh yeah, a left me kind of emotional also my nose is but, you know, when you set the crack, the nose begins to run. Anyways, so, yeah, you're probably, yeah. So, yeah. The Conquest ending, if everything was normal, but he was in it. Okay, so the Conquest ending, if he was the one to do it. Uh, you guys don't want to know what would happen if Bugsy G actually had to do if he was in Nep Gear's place instead of the other way around. Have you ever humped a goat? <laughs> That's my cousin being weird. Anyways, I want to hump a goat on Goat Simulator. <laughs> Make it go mad. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you get it, mad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anyways, yeah. You guys don't want to know if, like... What's this episode about? Uh, it's not an episode. I'm just kind of answering a question that someone asked me. What question is that? What would, what would it be like if, Bug, if Bugsy G was in the Conquest ending? But, I, like, I personally don't see... Should he be there? Now, now it's just a question, because the Conquest ending in the Neptunia series, where Netgear, like, kills all the main characters so she can fight the main villain with That's this... That's what I'm saying. Is Bugsy G supposed to be there? He's not, but people ask me if he was. If he if he got, if he he got was in that ending, what would it be like? Well, how about you make an alternate ending with him in there? 
and I kind of explained what the alternate ending would be. But then again, you know, when you explain, it's just like reading it. Like when you read it, and then when you see it on TV, it's always two different things. Mm-hmm. They get two different, you know, two different uh, ideas of it. Because you know, like like Harry Potter, you know, in the book they got certain stuff that's not in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. It, it, they they give you a different scene on how how the the the, the turn of events would be if, say, if Bugsy G did go all the way through to the end. Or if he just popped in every now and then, then you just like, boom, see him at the end, like, what the fuck? Like a cliff, like, whoa, where did he come from? Like, type thing. Mm. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that would be cool. That's the one that you're writing, right? Yeah, right now, I'm just kind of doing the first episode, establishing everything. Okay. But, okay. So where are you going to put it in? Where can you make it in a cartoon form? or It's not going to be in a cartoon form. I wish it could be. It's like a manga? Eh, somewhat like that. I mean, all we got to do is just get some people who know how to draw. Hmm. And they can put it together. I mean, you already got your storyline. Uh, yeah. You just need some... But, okay, but let me explain some to them, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm, I'm... It's okay. Sorry, it's, y'all. It's okay. I haven't heard too much about the series, so I'm trying to get caught up on it and, and you know, ask different questions. I've been super, super busy doing other things, so I'm just trying to get caught up on my cousin's hard work. Okay. Now, to basically... To... He basically wouldn't do it. Like... Alright. Even... Even if... Even if the sword said, you know... You know, you I get you can use me. But do I have to kill everybody? He wouldn't do it. Because Bugsy G, you gotta understand, Bugsy G has restrictions on his powers. He's a lot more powerful than a lot of people actually think that he is. Like a certain pawn version of himself. But he has tighter restrictions on his powers, but if those were ever lifted. He wouldn't even use the sword. He'd probably destroy the thing first. He'd be like, Ugh! Don't you eh and we'll never have to use you again. But I guess it, if we're being real, real honest, and there was no other way, the very thought of killing everybody, well, the, the CPUs that he loves so very, very much, it would be too much for his brain. It would be too much for his for his mental, for his like mental ability, he'd just go crazy. He'd, he'd snap at some point. And you're probably wondering, well, Bugsy, how do you know he'd snap if he's so different? Well, you know, Raph is an evil version of Bugsy, of every Bugsy from every dimension, right? Where he went crazy too, but with. Bugsy G being as he is and doing that, and that would be a not saying that it's a greater trauma, but it's a trauma that he would basically like the trauma of losing everybody he loved basically would have basically tro- drove him insane. Like, seriously insane. And he'd probably leave he'd probably leave the Neptunia dimension. Never to return. Would he go back home? Or would he just wander the dimensions? Alone. Afraid. Remorseful of what he did. Because he knows he never can come back. Or he can never use his time aspect to bring himself back and warn himself. Because he knows what will happen. Now, in terms of the actual conquest ending, I always kind of hated it. Because I just didn't... I, I mean, I get it. I get it. you got to get something really emotional to really show how much you actually love these characters. I get that. You know? But it is a freaking scary ending. Everybody dies. Everybody fucking dies. And, you know, everybody's like... It's for game industries. It's for game industries. It's for game industries. But I always kind of hated it because it just, you know, I understand, you know. I mean, I understand there are some Neptunia plots that are serious and some that are just funny. But I feel like 
doing that whole we're gonna kill all the characters, that didn't feel like an Neptunia thing. That felt like something out of that felt like something out of a fucking like you know, like something out of school days. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like that felt like something out of fucking school days, like ugh. And I'm actually kinda and I actually have I've heard in the Rebirth series now, they've actually literally I think they've taken the ending out because they know how bad it is. And I get it. It does have a point. It does have a purpose. It really shows how much you actually care about these characters. But in my but if I had a choice, I'd do something a little bit more, well, not as scarring. But still kind of has the same result, but just not in that way. Like, say, how about R4 is so powerful, right? Like, no one can beat her. But everybody tries a last-ditch effort to try and beat her. Everybody. Let's say this is in my continuity, okay? Let's say everybody tries a last-ditch effort to fight R4 the best they can. Bugsy G with his power, everybody else. They all they all try. But it ain't enough. And Bug Bugsy G and the other goddesses use the last of their energy to do one final attack. Everything is riding on this one attack. They they don't know if it's gonna work, but they know this is their last shot. So they let it so they let this attack loose. R4 is defeated, but because they, because that was the, since they used every little, every little bit of their power, every little reserve of their power, it permit, it's, it permanently drained them, like their life force. They are, de they're dead. I like this, I like, you know, this little ending that I created, his little bad ending that I created, at least makes sense because at least they go out as heroes and not as, you know, this whole for game industry thing. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the conquest ending. I think it's kind of, I think it's very depressing. And I know it has to be there, but that's the whole reason people made. That's the whole reason they made the Rebirth series so people can forget about it. One of the reasons. But um, you want to? Okay, let's get to something a little bit more happy. So, so you know, um, people have always people have always wondered. Well, not wondered, but one person, another person, asked me, like, because you're adding, because you're adding Bugs G with all the other goddesses, does that mean you hate Yuri shipping, dude? I don't mind the Yuri pairings because mostly I've been mostly I had. Mostly, I kind of like them in a special way. But, I always kind of wondered what would it be like if the goddesses actually fell for someone that actually is, in all regard, the same kind of, you know, you know, he's powerful, he's powerful, and he's about the same kind of level as they are, and probably even a little bit stronger. Probably. I'm not saying that he is, I'm not saying that Bugsy G is, but he's about the same kind of, it's about the same kind of strength with them power wise. Now, now I the biggest question I always the biggest question I've been receiving lately is are the goddesses are the goddesses okay do, like do, why do the goddesses love Bug? Why do the goddesses love Bug to G so much? Well, I didn't say this in the first episode, but it's implied that he's been playing all the other Neptunia games since the very first one, and because of this, and because of this special, and because of the fact that he can beat most of these games in a fucking day, which is a real feat within itself. I think they were, you know, those thank you for playing corners. 
It was thank you for playing corners for him. For everybody else to get the standard, you know, thanks for playing, thanks for helping us out. But Bugsy G always got the, like, the interesting ones. Like, they, like they would say, thank you. We can't thank you enough for all that you've done for us. Without you, we don't know where we'd be. Every freaking game. But when he finally plays like the newer one, that's the VR one, they are actually they were actually able to finally talk to him. Some really didn't know what he looked like. New like Bert really didn't know what he, what to actually expect, but she did. She didn't really like Bugsy G. And Bugsy G would go there with all his stories about, well, his adventures. And everything that he became. Blonde really, really kind of, you know, he didn't know, she didn't know that Bugsy liked to read. Bugsy G liked to read a lot of, like, light novels and books of, books and stuff that she actually liked. And because of that, they're more, they're kind of kindred spirits with each other because of that. And there's a little bit more of a kind of, there's a little bit more of an attract, like, he's attracted to all of them, but with Blonde, he's way attracted. Like, with Blonde, there's kind of a force that kind of pulls them together a little bit more. But, he does kind of have the same thing for all of them, but... I don't know, him and, Bl him and Blonde kind of have, like, uh, something more. And him and Neptune, they share in their bond of retro games. Which is a kind of... Yeah, let me explain. Which is a sort of... You know, they kind of have, like, a... Neptune and Bugsy G, they have this thing with each other. With, with with Noir, he's more teasing. With Noir, he's more teasing, and he kind of he, he knows that Noir has feelings. He knows that Noir has feelings for him, but he rather not face them yet. Same with Vert. Vert, he kind of feels a certain way about Vert, like. You could say that, you know, he basically loves all of them, but with Neptune, if you ask them on a, if you ask them, if you really ask them point blank, if you ask them point blank what he really, how he really admired both, if you ask them while being really just shit face drunk, he would tell you that. Neptune and the others are the real reason are the real reason that he's even still kind of a hero still. Because because unlike the Prime Dimension Bugs unlike the Prime Dimension Bugsy, G doesn't really have anybody around him. Everybody else he's ever known has either, you know, they still keep in touch with them, but they're gone living their own lives, and he's just, well, doing the best he can with his YouTube channel and working on what he does. You know? People like him fine. People like him well enough. That's neither here nor there. But he does consider... He does consider... That, yeah, he's pretty lonely. When he beat the Neptunia game, that loneliness that he had for so long basically melted away. And that's why in the first episode, you're going to see a little hint of what he used to be. Before he was lonely, before he lost everything to the ultimate the confidence he used to actually have. And you're going to see a lot of stuff. He starts off as kind of... He starts off as a kind of jokey dude that's... 
shy sometimes and really uses his jokes as a kind of coping mechanism for his own loneliness and shortcomings and some of his failings and some of the things he really regrets. But after a while, after being with all the goddesses, you know, he's back to that he's back to the old person he used to be, but semi but even more but even more greater than he ever but greater than he ever was. And the big question people have too, because I I have been pressed about this a few times, and ha I have been pressed about this a few times in the last week, and I just now I'm just now getting to well, Kappa and the and the little uh, Pikachu, the little Pikachu parody, will they uh, get together? Well, well, it, it may happen. Oh, I can say that that may. I can't tell you any more than that. You know what I mean? <sighs> and oh yeah, Plutia is gonna be also in the series because it's kind of loosely has a little bit of the anime how the barrier between their dimensions are is open. So Plutia is going to release. Plutia as Iris Heart is gonna really actually kinda of fall for Bugsy G because the fact that he's unbreakable and mostly unshakable and that's what turns her on basically. <laughs> you guys are probably like, Bugsy, that's not enough to actually But you're like, but Bugsy, that's not enough to actually make make it you that's not enough to actually justify Plutia being there. Oh trust me, I have so many different plans for Plutia. You don't even know, but what I am telling you is just the beginning. Because Plutia actually, as Iris Heart, and as her normal self too, finds that she does kind of, kind of love Bugsy too, in a weird kind of way that involves mostly, mostly. Mostly involves freaking SMN shit. But yeah. To say to say that to say that this this show is just gonna be a one fan's one fan's just power fantasy and trying to make the goddesses his own because that's what that's what I want as a writer is is which is it's vastly incorrect I would say because I want to change people's minds about OCs being in stories like this or at least try because not every OC is a horrible abomination because someone doesn't know how to balance their character You know, you just because some of you don't like OCs, I'm, I can't force you all to like it. You know, you guys are gonna have to just like it and just either like it or don't. You can't just be like, Ew. but the thing is, I hate when people bitch about OCs because they're not really bad. It's just the it's just a person trying to get better with their writing skills, and you all are just trying to be all like, yeah, well. These characters are so fucking bad because they are. But why? Like, I want you all to ask, I want you all to really question, tell me, why do you not like, why do you like OCs? Why do some of you go out of your way to hate on OCs? Because someone did that to you? Because you find that they're unoriginal, because all you found were bad ones, or you're just that special kind of YouTuber who just feels the need to talk about other people's OCs because that's what you like to do. You like to be a little, you like to be a little, 
you like to be a little douche to people. Now, my OC, now, now this version of Bugsy, I feel is pretty, is pretty special because he's not like Prime Bugsy. He's, he's not as confident as Prime Bugsy is. He's not as, he's not as sure of himself as Prime Bugsy is because, you know, because even though he has restraints on his powers, he always knows that, yeah, he always knows that he has an exit strategy or something that he can do. Bugsy G, not so much. He's fought a lot. He has a lot more experience. You could say, you could wager that he has a little bit more experience in fighting more so than more so than Prime Bugsy. But because of that, he's more... But because of that, he's not as outgoing. He's not as... Well, he's outgoing. But he's not as sociable anymore than he used to be because, you know, he's like, you know, because he was like, why bother? Why bother? Why bother talking to my friends? Why bother trying to, why bother trying to forge new relationships with people if all they're going to do is just leave me? What's the point? You know? So I would say he was depressed because that's not what it was. I'd just say he was more down on himself than anything else. But in his, you know, he does have he what he does have his own YouTube channel in his dimension, and he never he would never let it show. But off the camera, it just shows how much how lonely he really is. You know. And when he, like I said, when he beat the Neptune, when he beat the Neptunia games, he under, you know, they cured him of his loneliness. You know, he gets some of that old confidence he used to have back in the day, because he has people nowadays. He he has people now that he's willing to die for. He's willing to fight for. He's willing to do all this stuff for, because they believe in him because all the times he's helped them without him really even noticing oh yeah and in every game that Bugsy every Neptunia game that Bugsy G has ever played Blonde has pretty much shown that he, she, she does kind of have a little crush on him on what, he, on what her preconceived notion of him was and then when, he had, then when she actually met him she was she was even more enamored. It actually kind of goes into um well here let me show you. Now you guys can probably like you guys can probably hate me for this. And I don't blame you if you do. I so don't blame you. Okay. If there's a sequel that exists, or if it ever comes out, I'd really appreciate it if you could buy it for me. And I'll be sure to keep a lookout for any books that I think you'd like to read. At this rate, we'll end up talking about books forever. So it's probably a good time for me to leave. Thanks so much for letting me read this. And oh yeah. His war basically assured him that, you know, whenever he needed to talk to the goddesses with this mode, he could. Like, whenever they were ready. So, <laughs> actually, I never put this in the actual episode, but you can, you can kind of, you can kind of freaking, uh, whenever, like, Blonde or the others showed up, 
Dude would put on Axe body spray and put on his best suit. Just to talk to them. I, uh, and I didn't put that in the episode, but I'm going to put that in the second episode as they kind of... All right, then. I'll see you soon. Really? But I got to say this on this video. Really? You got to look at Florence Chess. You know, she's so conscious about that shit. Well, she gets angry about that shit, you know? You don't need to, you don't need to freaking... You don't have to tell her that she has a flat chest, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hi there. I'm here again. Is she actually... Like I mentioned last time. Here, I brought... Hey, you know, in my interpretation, Blonde is actually... Blonde is actually more open with him because he's the dude to save the world and she feels like he should just be open with the dude that has saved their world countless times. And it is, and like, in the prime dimension now, the uh, the A's thing. Blonde actually sees a gigantic D A journal, chronicling, chronic, chronic, chronicling his, chronicling how he really, chronicling his his uh, playing the games and how he really, how he sort of feels about Blonde and the others. But Blonde sees the part about her, and it's like, he really defines Blonde as a, a, and in his own words, says that Blonde is the most beautiful, like, Neptune is, he says, Neptune's cute, Noir's actually pretty beautiful in her, in her own sundary way that he finds kind of, that he finds charming. But he finds, but he says the, and he says Vert's funny and very, very super hot. You know, blonde rolls her eyes at that. But then when she gets to the, the part of the journal about her, she reads it and she, uh, like, she really does understand that, that the crush that she has on Bugsy G is not, is well founded because he feels the same way, and she he does live with Blonde for most of the series before getting his own place between all their borders. Don't even ask me how that's gonna be done. Don't you worry. But um, you know, and because of that, Blonde actually even gets in the bed with him and sleeps with him. You know? And he... You know, it, it leads to a funny scene that I'm gonna put in one of the episodes where he's like, Why, why are you doing it in the bed? She's like, Oh, I just wanted to... And she, and she blushes and just walks out of the room and she's like, what did I, he's like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what did I do? Did I, did, oh god, did I, did, did I, ha, did I have, a, did I pop a boner while I was asleep? Oh no, and it, it, it blunt, oh no. And it just turns into this misunderstanding. Got you some books from my room. They're all and again, wonder. and you know. I haven't said this in most of the in most Chaos Lord lore, but yeah, Chaos Lords can be edge ageless if they want to be. Like they can decide whether to just age normally or be ageless. Decided, and since the goddesses are basically ageless themselves, but can die just like him. They're kind of a perfect match for them. Wonderful books. And I'd love for you to read them when you get a chance. I'm going to put them on your bookshelf, okay?
Oh yeah. He says the blonde's a oh yeah, in that in that journal post. He says that blonde's like a beauty to behold. She does have a lot of she does have an anger issue she does have a few anger issues. But he also but he adds just like himself. Being a person who was a king for a very long time. So he kind of relates with Braun on that level, too. Why he doesn't really open up to Braun about his past, well, he kind of had to watch it to find out. But Vert, Vert was just regaled with all the stories that he told about his adventures. Just, just really, just really just captivated by every word he said. And he even felt sorry for him that he actually lost his family. And even, and if like, you know, and actually, it's, she's like, it's the ultimate, it's just, she goes to, she actually says to Bugsy before she leaves, that the ultimate ever does come to our dimension. I will, I will stop him for you. Because it's not fair she goes like, it's not fair that you had everything you wanted. Everything you could ever possibly need just for it to be taken away from you like that. You know, and then Bugsy just chimes in with the whole, eh, well, you can't really change fate. Even with my time manipulation powers, you can't really change it. It's a fixed point. There's nothing I can do. Bert basically hugs him and basically says, whispers in his ear, you don't have to be alone anymore. As long as I'm here, you never have to be alone. They all say it to him and they all say it to him in different ways, but Bert really just legitimately loves him. He, she legitimately loves him. The feelings are mutual, but, you know, at this point, he's just really trying to figure out who he actually wants to be with. And his ideal situation is getting with all of them, but eh, who knows if that's going to be a thing. But back to my actual point. In this collection. This poem. <clears throat> For your precious sake, once my eager life itself was not dear to me. This poem is about a sacrificial kind of love. The speaker in it loves the person they're talking to very much. But I relate most to this part. But now it is my heart's desire that long, long years it may endure. It means, even though mating was beautiful in itself, it isn't enough. They'd like to stay together for all eternity. And that's how Blonde actually feels about Bugsy G. That's how, he actually, that's how she actually feels. This was got, in, in, in my interpretation of it, in my like show, it's a subtle way of saying, and this is like after she goes and looks at his DA account and sees that journal. So she's dropping subtle hints that she does want to be with them. But so are the others in their own way. <sighs> you know what? I like talking about this stuff with you guys. And, um, you know, before I get out of here, I just want to give a big, big hearty fucking thank you to everybody. Everybody on the Amino. Everybody on the Neptunia Amino that is that are just liking, you guys are liking my art contest. Some of you are competing, and I I can't thank you all enough for that. I I really can't. I words cannot express how joyful and happy I feel. Like I'm getting a like every other fun. I'm getting a like every day, and I just gotta say thank you from the bottom of my heart, everybody. I. I didn't know I'd get so much support. I didn't know that a lot of you 
are actually wanting to get into this. You guys are like, okay, yeah, give, me, give me like, um, give me like a few days and I'll get it working. Or, you know, this sounds like a good idea because it's a different take on them. You know, some people are actually even really kind of wanting this to be animated, even though. Right now, as it stands, my computer can't really do what it can do. And you know, I know sorta how to animate Source Filmmaker. Anything else I can learn, I can just learn from the tutorial. Because their tutorial, their Source Filmmaker tutorials are pretty easy to learn. But it's the fact that this computer, this computer right here, whatever I turn Source Filmmaker on, it just doesn't want to work. Although I am going to get the, um, I am going to get the miles that I need soon enough. And from there, we'll see. I'm try, I'll try to do like a test animation, a few other things. The only problem that I'm gonna run into is I need a I need a sort of model for Bugsy G and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Prob I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I'll I'll figure it out. But for right now the series is not gonna be animated or or even even voiced. The only reason that I'm gonna like I'm gonna probably just do the first one as an audio book, and then from there on, it's gonna be more like uh, teenage stuff. Because there's a lot to actually get through, you know, unpacking all that in the first episode. So, yeah. Um. No Five Nights at Freddy's and no Undertale. The only Undertale references you're ever gonna get is like the uh, videos of just Bugs Bugsy Prime and Bugsy G just talking about you know their various experiences, and that's all you're ever gonna get. Like you're never gonna see, you're never gonna see, uh, you're never gonna hear. You probably are gonna hear Megalo because either in either case, that's kind of. Even though it's like a char theme, it's kind of theirs when they're fighting Uno. I don't know, I may charge it. But, you know, so there's going to be no Undertale stuff, even though I don't really see. I'm not, I'm not going to, like, like I'm not going to, like, put Undertale in it, but there are going to be little, there are going to be slight references. Like, there is going to be, there is going to be, like, just little references to be passed about. Papyrus and Sands, but they're not going to be key figures in this show. Even though I kind of want them to, but, you know, I understand. Uh, right now, I'm going to just, we're going to just focus on the guys right now for this first season. And we're going to see where that goes. We're going to see where that goes. And what feedback can you guys give me along the way? I'm Bugsy, and I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say, hold up, let me see. where is that, where is, I'm Bugsy No Name, and I just wanted to say, let's take a minute, sorry. I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for just just taking a chance on this. And I will not, I will not disappoint you. I promise. Okay? And I will not get into random fights with fucking fans that just don't want to, that just don't want to love this series. Because I understand things are subjective, and I'm not gonna try and fight with everybody. But if someone has a, but if someone does have a beef with me just for doing the series, because that perfect little shippings are being threatened for a show that really isn't even connected to the main Neptunia universe, like such a thing exists, but it kind of does. But I just wanted to kind of say, you know, uh, you know, you're seeing. 
seeing my real face, and sorry, I'm so, I got my beard going, I'm sorry about that. But, um, thank you. From, like, actually, like, God, just thank you guys. You, you gave me something really important. And, uh, given my luck and my track record, I don't really get many, many praises for what I do. And, to be honest, it just, I'm not going to cry or anything if that's what you guys are wondering, but thank you. Just from the bottom of my heart, man. From the bottom of my heart, dudes, dudettes, whatever. Whatever. I just, a any fucking gender, whatever. If you're really pushing for me and really wanting me to succeed for this and really liking the art contest and competing, I just got to say thank you. Thank you for just for just helping me out and for just looking at my post and seeing if you want to be involved. And you know, it would be nice in the in my other posts if you actually guys say that you are actual you actually want to be involved in this. Because I really need some people, I really need some people to like do some art first and uh, see if anybody else would want to actually participate. I know a lot of people probably don't because you're OCM. But still, but still, I would really appreciate it. Um, I think I'm about, I'm about done. But, but again, thank you. On my gaming goddess, which uh, which is the title I'm going to keep because when I really think about it, it's just me being cheeky and you and, and making kind of a parody thing with it. So yeah, but I'll see you all later. Um, peace and remember, join the cult of Nep Nep today. <laughs> Sorry, or join or or join the Church of Blonde. Or blonde, whichever. I'm more particular to the church of the verbs, but let but don't let anybody hear me. But don't let don't but don't don't but don't tell nobody I told you that. Seriously, they they will cut my knee, they will cut my kneecaps off. I am not fucking kidding. Okay, that was a joke. If y'all didn't if y'all can catch that. The humor I exude. I wish it would help me in comedy tonight. Fucking people. I, I got booed off the stage so many times. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for for just humoring me for a bit. And uh, for, for those of you that have been asking me questions, keep it up. I got some more stuff that you, if, if you want to know any more background stuff, I'll tell you what you need to know. I'm just not going to spoil every little thing. See you guys later. And bye, folks. And also, the Neptune, and I may do a Neptunia thing about the VR. About Nept Mega Dimension Neptunia um, VIIR for you guys. Soon I'm going to do that. So, yeah. I'll see you all later. This is Bugsy signing off.